The word blockbuster is once again being used to describe what's happening on Wall Street. Check the numbers, because if you read them and understand them, the economy is not cratering. Much of what was lost last year has been recovered, and in the end, this is the nature of the monetary beast. So should we not just have a hither come to Jesus moment and understand this is what playing the stock market is all about in the first place? Let us begin there. Welcome back. Syndicated columnist, University of Maryland professor of business, Peter Morisi, joined by New York Times bestselling author and the small business expert, Susan Solovic. Thank you so much for being here, both of you. And Peter, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you. I look right at the numbers here and I look at the headlines. Mediocre Friday ends Wall Street's best week this year. In the green for the third time in seven weeks, S&P 500 climbed out of correction territory. Wait a minute, Peter. Let's get excited. Things aren't that bad, are they? Well, they're getting better. They're not, they're not that bad anymore. They're getting better, but they're not great. Uh, the price of oil is rising, and for some strange reason, the stock market has determined that high oil prices are good for America. News to me, but that's what's happening. But does this not prove to us that if we look at last year, 2015, and look at this year, the way things are going, that this is what happens in the stock market? Yes, you suffer tremendous losses, but guess what? It's a gamble. You play it. It's going to happen. We live in an era of great volatility with electronic trading and hedge funds and all the rest of that out there. And so much of the money just sitting very stable, you know, in IRAs and KEOs and in index funds that never trades. So we're going to see a lot of volatility on the basis of a small segment of the market. And if you're not, if you don't have the stomach for it, then my, my, my view is where else are you going to put your retirement money? You can't get any money on bonds, so you just got to live with it. All right, Susan, so let's look at this then from your specialty the small business person. Isn't this good news overall for 2016? Well, certainly it's good news. I mean, obviously, if you've invested in an IRA or 401k, then obviously it's good news when the market goes up. But I do think that what happens is when we see the market fall, a lot of people, even small investors like myself, we see that as like, oh, the stock market is on sale. So everybody goes out and jumps back in again. And then when it starts to go down, the panic begins and people sell. But from the small business perspective, I mean, let's just talk about the jobs report that came out last Friday. You know, everybody was rah, rah, rah about the great jobs report. But if you looked at what happened in the small business sector, which, by the way, is about 98 percent of all employers and businesses in the U.S., uh, hiring was actually soft in February. We're seeing more small business closures than startups. So I'm concerned when you look at that uh, underlying perspective that actually until we get small businesses growing, which are the job creators, which are responsible for most innovation in this country, then we really aren't going to see anything more than a tepid recovery at best, if even that. All right, then let's talk about the two likely candidates, if you will, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Susan, in your estimation, which one would be better for small business owners? You know, I'm going to say this much. If I could pick and choose little pieces of all the candidates, I think, and mold them into one, I think we'd have a good candidate. But Manta did a survey, that's a social platform for small businesses, and actually found that most small businesses, about 8,000 respondents, said Donald Trump would be the better candidate. Here's the thing. When it comes to tax policy, which is an issue for all small businesses, clearly Donald Trump is a favorite because he wants to lower the corporate tax rate to 15% on all small businesses businesses, that's good. Lower the personal income tax rate. You know, Hillary's out there. She still wants to tax the wealthy. She wants to increase capital gains on short-term and, and investments and reward those who have long-term investments. She just wants to tax the wealthy. Tax, 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 tax and spend. Healthcare is another big issue. The Donald, he wants to get rid of that Obamacare. He calls it a catastrophe. Hillary, you know, she says, oh, she wants to strengthen the good parts and keep it going. And, you know, when her husband, when she was working with her husband in office on the health care bill, she was, you know what, small businesses aren't going to be able to afford this. She was actually quoted as having said, well, you know, it's not my problem to deal with undercapitalized small businesses. So you've still got a lot of that attitude going on when it comes to regulation. Regulation, definitely stifling small businesses. You know, the Donald wants to get government out of business. She wants to permit more into business, even though her rhetoric might make you think differently. But she's in favor of a family medical leave, a mandatory, okay. mandatory equal pay, uh, minimum increase in minimum wage, and of course the th lower, uh, increasing the threshold of the overtime pay. You've got so a lot in there, so let me go not, ahead and bring in Peter favor. in here right now. Peter, your side on this. Well, I don't think that Hillary is very uh, sensitive to businesses in general. 
she has a social agenda that she wants to accomplish, and if you get hurt, burned, or thrown overboard, she doesn't care. And I think if we look at California, say the Paycheck Fairness Act, there is no, there is no minimum threshold for employers. Uh, they have to, even if you only have three employees, you have to comply with its requirements of justifying differences in pay between men and women. That takes micromanagement down to the level of the Soviet Union, where a central planning bureau determined everyone's pay. That's absurd. I don't think that Hillary Clinton, I, I, they're sensitive to the need for growth over, over in the Clinton household, but if it gets in the way of her social objectives, she's just... Blind to facts and deaf to reason. Heck, she still thinks colleges discriminate against women when we're graduating and giving 60% of our diplomas to women. It's absurd. Peter, i got about 30 seconds left. I wanted to ask you in Market Watch this weekend, there was a story. Donald Trump's business disaster is worse than you think. It looked at his casinos, and it showed him at a minus 89% on a lot of his investments. It showed him basically having people lose hundreds of millions of dollars, $600 million in net losses because of his casinos. Uh, 20 seconds left. What does that tell us about Trump, the businessman? Donald Trump has in ready cash $600 million that he could put into this campaign if he cho chose to. We'll see if he actually thinks the presidency is worth that much. Now, granted, his father gave him some money to get started, but not $600 million. Anybody who can go from a couple of million to $600 million is a lot smarter than this stuff says. You have to understand the nature of the real estate business. Mm -hmm. It's filled with people washing in and washing out bankruptcies. It's a game. That's how they play it. We call it monopoly when we do it on Christmas Eve. But in, Mr. but in Mr. Trump's case, it's for real, and he's a winner. Uh, that's all I'm going to do is go ahead and check, you know, go past go and get a couple hundred dollars. Susan Solovic, Peter Marisi, thanks a lot for joining us. Now, correcting those who fail to understand the passion behind the First Lady's ideas on drug use in America. Next.